what's going on guys it's Bagas here and today to wrap up the 3d mini saga of reviews unless I somehow find more we're gonna be reviewing Giants of Patagonia and unlike the other two which by the way check them out I have actually seen this one in all its 3d glory granted I was like a third grader or something so I don't really remember much of anything about it but hey it still counts oh and uh, because of that I'm pretty much going into this with fresh eyes. And speaking of which, let's get started. Giants of Patagonia is yet another 40 minute long 3D documentary film, this time featuring the, you guessed it, giant dinosaurs of prehistoric Patagonia, most predominantly Mapusaurus and Argentinosaurus. This documentary also has scenes of the discoveries and fossils sprinkled in between. The film begins with a cool view of the Milky Way galaxy in space and a prelude to the extinction of the dinosaurs. Before we get this, honestly, you really weird and sudden title drop. We then get these beautiful establishing shots of the landscapes, although I do have one gripe with this and that it kind of lasts a bit too long for my taste. Then we get a cameo of some ichthyosaurs and another grossly oversized hyperodon. Like, guys, seriously, Lipolodon was only like 7 meters at most. It didn't grow nearly as large as what these documentaries tell you. After this, we jump to the modern day and to the site of the discovery of Argentinosaurus. And right after this, we jump into the Cretaceous and an Argentinosaurus nest, meaning strong one. Not long after, we get the introduction to our other dinosaur, a Maposaurus named Longtooth. And just like Alpha's egg, I like how they contrast in the way they come into the world, with strong one having to fend on his own while Longtooth is born to a very vigilant and protective mother. We then skip a few years and we see both Longtooth and Strong One in their adolescent years. Soon after, we get this long sequence in a museum that really gives you a sense of scale of how large these dinosaurs are. Jumping back to the Cretaceous, we see both dinosaurs as adults and not long after, we get a hunt between a herd of Argentinosaurus and a mob of Maposaurus. The film ends with the KT event, and I actually quite like the destruction sequence, and we get the aftermath of the impact as well, which is honestly something that not a lot of dinosaur documentaries focus on, and I'm glad they kind of showed a little bit of it here. The final three minutes sends us off with how dinosaurs still exist in the form of birds, and how really we are still living in the age of dinosaurs. Honestly, Giants of Patagonia was a mixed bag for me. On the one hand, it's more science driven and you know, I usually give a little more leeway to those types of documentaries, but at the same time, I felt like that came at the expense of the story a bit. While watching it, I really felt like they were trying to do too much all at once, because since the documentary predominantly has scenes of discoveries, it didn't really give time for the story to develop, and we end up just getting these time skips where we don't really see any development at all. And the resolution says that one of the Mapusaurus get, gets injured by the Argentinosaurus and the other surrounded before chasing another dinosaur. And when I got to this part, I was like, what? Wait, that's it? Is that really the ending? And, you know, so I really wish they would have stuck with either focusing on the science or focusing on the story. Because if you try and do both, you end up with both of them kind of feeling half-baked, if you know what I mean. And, you know, I kind of gave a lot of flag on C-Rex for not telling a story through its shorts, but now I feel like they, since they knew, they kind of knew what they were wanting to focus on, neither part feels kind of big, you know, because you get the discoveries or, you know, the science, the aspect didn't feel that big, and, you know, the shorts, since they were trying to tell a story, they were meant more of a showcase. It really works better in the film's favor of what it was trying to convey to the audience. And what Giants of Patagonia is trying to tell is basically what Alpha's Egg did way better because that show gave time to develop the characters and thus made for a better story with a more satisfying conclusion. Also, I felt like there were way too many shots of the landscapes. Like, I get it, they're establishing shots, but they lasted way too long for my taste. Because, like, in the first two seconds, I already get the setting. I was like, okay, can we just move on? And you know, I felt like the quote-unquote wasted time could have been used to develop the story further. Now, on the bright side, I do quite like the designs. They are very detailed, and I like how they look a lot more realistic compared to some other ones I've seen in the past. And also, I like the inclusion of feather dinosaurs. We even get feather pterosaurs. I think this is one of the few instances where we get feather pterosaurs. But those aren't really enough to save it for me from, you know, kind of made me forget the flaws of this film. 
and overall it felt very disappointing to me but you know I can still see the potential it had for in making a great story with also having a you know a kind of science driven approach alongside that and yeah, I think this would have honestly benefited from having a longer runtime because I felt like if it had that longer runtime it would have had more time to not only you know include the science bits but also develop the story so you know yeah at the end it's, it's disappointing but I can still see the potential of a great film Alright, time to put on a tier list. Quality wise, I give it a 3.9 because, like, for me personally, it it felt like it tried to do way too much all at once, and thus the product itself feels kind of half baked on both sides because, you know, I, I like the science stuff. I actually quite like how they focus on the discovery and such, but it also kind of only showed the discoveries and not really anything else science related. And so that side feels half baked. And then the story aspect also feels half baked because they didn't give the time to develop the story. In fact, what I most remember now, aside from you know, the action sequence at the end, is the shots of landscapes. And that's honestly what I took away from this film was it had way too many shots of landscape. Like a good, like, I don't know, five to ten seconds at least for like each shot. Like, you, d you don't need that long to make an establishing shot. And, you know, I do want to mention other documentaries in this because, like, say Ballad of Bagel, right? They also do both, but the difference is is that they had two separate episodes, one focusing on the story and one focusing on the science. That way, it gave time for the story to actually develop and make a good story while also not detracting from what it was trying to tell through the science. And it did what this documentary tried to do, but better. Now, you know, on the bright side, you know, the CGI models are really good. I actually quite like these ones a lot compared to some other ones. And, you know, I do, again, like how we're getting more and more dinosaur documentaries that focus on discoveries as well. But I feel like it's not really, you know, like I said in the conclusion, it's not really enough to save it from me to overlook the flaws of this film. Uh, Entertainment-wise, I give it a 3.8 because pretty much the only action sequence was the final hunt, and even then, it's kind of paced. Okay, well, I don't, I want to say it's like paced awkwardly. It's just kind of cut awkwardly, like, the C-Rex uh, action sequence as well with the light proton hunt because it kind of, it just kind of ends without really any resolution and that goes for the story as well actually but you know <laughs> and I keep repeating this because it's honestly just what I know is the most get there were way too many scenes of established shots like granted some of them were actually really cool we got these cool shots of the landscapes but at the same time I feel like there were way too many of them and they lasted for far too long and, and although, you know, I say all these things, it's not technically a boring film review. Uh, quite like what's in the film, then you're obviously gonna have, uh, you're gonna find entertainment within it. But, you know, it's not the most uh, action-centric, which, you know, I, I, I say that. Uh, I said that last time as well, seeing a lot of action-centric documentaries. Uh, you know, it's a nice change of pace, but now I kind of, you know, I feel like I, feel like I need something to also remind me of the other side, so... Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, I watched this thing on one time, and actually speaking of watching, let's just move on to the next time, which is rewatchability, which I give a 4.3, because, you know, pretty much the only bright side to this, well, okay, that's a bit harsh, but the kind of only thing that kind of saves it from giving it this high, this, but the one thing that gives it this high of a score is the fact that it's only 40 minutes, so, you know, you're not gonna spend your entire day watching it. And, you know, I really think, unless you enjoyed it the first time, which I'll admit I did have some parts that I enjoyed quite a bit, the hunt, and I also like the designs, as I said, uh, you're not really going to find a reason unless you watch it again. And, you know, I, I've, I say this a lot, and, you know, I just tend to get into a high score, but, um, but really, it's like, it, it's rewatchable for sure, but, like, unless you want to specifically watch this. It's not one that you're just gonna randomly think, oh, I'll rewatch this one, so. That kind of where it stands for me. And as for my personal opinion, I give it a 3.7, because in reality, it's not an inherently bad documentary. I just personally didn't like it all that much this time around, because I was just disappointed. Like, maybe I had my expectations a bit too high, and, you know, I do see the potential it has, and some of its merits too, but I don't know, maybe this wasn't the right time for me to watch it, and it just ended up feeling disappointed because, and you know, part of that is because I had such high expectations for it, as I said, but I don't know, 
kind of like have after you know uh, sea monsters which was honestly really good and your know, c-rex is a fun visual experience like i said in that review i expected this one to have its own visual to have its own like quirk but it didn't really accomplish that and ended up just being an average uh, sort of documentary and you know and you know it does do good in the visual side and that's honestly the best part of the film but other than that i don't know for me it just felt it was I don't know, it had so much more potential to be great. And that brings it up to a total score of 15.7, landing it, granted, in the A tier still, because my I recently looked at my tier list and it's kind of weird how there's such a point difference between them, but it is the lowest rated documentary so far. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and also, first of all, the lighting is absolutely terrible because Currently, it's very cloudy outside, and you, you probably can't see it because it's backlight and stuff. But it's really cloudy outside, so, um, lighting's gonna be on a minute terrible because this light is not very strong in my room. But, anyways, all that aside, I do want to say I apologize for not uh, uploading a video uh, on Sunday, which is once again the day I'm recording this. But, really, on Saturday, I just felt really tired and stuff after a big long week of tests and stuff. So, I was kind of feeling burned out, and really. I spend most of my um, most of my afternoon lying in bed because I was so freaking tired after lunch. Um, but yeah, that's why I didn't upload. And um, hold on, let me just look at this. Um, you should also probably expect some inconsistencies in the uploading schedule because uh, I'm having to do a lot more work in school. I have a bunch of projects I have to finish with a limited amount of time, so I also have other stuff to do other than this. So expect me to be inconsistent, but you probably already expected that. I mean, this is like the second time, I think in a row, is it in a row? I don't remember. The second time in a row that I didn't upload a Sunday video. Or maybe it was, I don't know. But um, yeah, anyways, um, uh, the other thing I want to say is that, you know, since we're kind of done with 3D documentary uh, films, we're going to be reviewing other stuff. Um, I do have a set rotation of, uh, well, not set rotation. I, I have a set of documentaries that I want to review at some point. But I'm gonna have to decide when. And um, also, I don't actually know why. When is. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be busy or not with the next review. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, 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 we'll get there when we get there. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.